And I'd like to thank everyone for coming. This is, I'm really thrilled to see all of you. Uh, so ICFJ is an organization that advances quality journalism worldwide. And to pick up on something that Tim was saying, uh, we are seeing more and more of advancing quality journalism means engaging citizens and including them in the process and trying to help come, uh, overcome some of these gaps in quality uh, information. Um, so I'm Deputy Director of the Knight International Journalism Fellowships, and that's a, a program funded by the Knight Foundation uh, to match media professionals uh, to partners around the world to launch projects in a country or in a region. They're year-long projects. Uh, and the, the goal is really to produce some kind of lasting outcome in these places. So oftentimes that includes uh, launching like a radio program on poverty or maybe a mobile news service uh, or you know, investigative journalist, uh, investigative uh, journalist networks or citizen journalism networks. Uh, and the idea is we really want these things to, to continue on. And, and one of the things that we're seeing is, you know, technology is uh, playing a more and more important role in this. Uh, and we're seeing that it's really important not just to help journalists, but to connect citizen journalists and really create information communities using social media, using technology. And uh, so that's a lot of what we do, and I'll get into some examples of some of these projects that we've been doing using social media in sort of a broad context. Our first fellow that we're gonna talk about is Shoot Chowdhury. He's launching a, um, a system, or he has launched a system in India to uh, provide a mobile news service for indigenous and rural people uh, in, in tribal areas of, of India, connecting them to news for the first time for many of these people because uh, radio in India is not independent, it's, it's uh, run by the government. There is no space for independent radio, which are typically uh, sources of information for people in rural areas. Well, what he has done is worked with uh, someone from Microsoft Research India to create something called uh, CGNet Suara, which is an interactive voice response uh, mobile technology, where basically people in rural areas can take a mobile phone and press one to, uh, to submit a report uh, of their own. So it's, this is a voice report and press two to hear their own report or hear other reports. So it's a basically a two-way information service that reaches people in tribal and, and, and rural uh, India. And that's been really significant for um, people there. We've actually counted 29 separate instances of societal impact where uh, the government has responded to reports in some way or there's been some kind of change in policy. For instance, a citizen reported that uh, he was not being paid uh, by the labor program that's uh, for poor people, the NREGA program. And when he submitted that report, we had a moderator take that report and follow up. So connect to uh, news media, tell them, hey, this is happening. Uh, and also to follow up with the person who filed the report. And by creating that sort of feedback loop, what ended up happening is the government said, oh, we must pay because this makes you know, the government look really bad. Uh, and so, we found that this has been a good system for getting people payment, and that this particular person reported did get the money that he was owed. Uh, so this system has helped open, reopen uh, hospitals that had been closed, um, and uh, things like that. I mean, it's so anyway. Twenty-nine instances of this just in a few years of running the system, and the key to it is that we have this moderation stage that citizen reports in, the moderator listens to it, and then takes that information one step further. And so journalism itself plays a really important role getting these voices into the national and international media. Uh, the information is published on the system and it's also published on a website that I was hoping to show you, uh, but I'll send around the links afterward. Um, and so people can actually listen to the audio reports from anywhere in the world that has access to the internet. Uh, and there's also a, a small description that is included too, um, so that people have access to a text transcript. So we took this idea and we applied it to Indonesia. Uh, we, there are people in West Kalimantan who are living in forest areas uh, who are pressured by deforestation, environmental degradation, and issues of land rights uh, as companies are getting uh, the land uh, given to them by the government for things like palm oil plantations. Well, the problem is, is these, these indigenous people don't really have uh, a voice in the media. And so what we've done is we've used Frontline SMS. Uh, in case you're not familiar with that technology, it's basically a system for sending SMS reports to a centralized database. You can also blast out uh, to all people who have subscribed to this system. Uh, and you're seeing instances of this around the world. So we've launched a service for that. Uh, 
And then we've also launched um, the Suara technology that we've used in India in Indonesia. Um, and so there's a voice-based system and a text-based system. The voice base is great because you're talking about people who are often illiterate, uh, and so they have access to a resource where they can be part of the news, sending the information in and also receiving it. And we're connecting those, uh, those reports on a website, uh, making it available to, to a broader audience, and also following up with moderators connecting to media. Again, there's that sort of information community that, that we're helping connect. <coughs> Uh, now we're also in the Middle East launching something called Hex Hackers Groups. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but Hex Hackers was originally started by the Night News Challenge grant uh, to a group here in the United States. And they're launching meetup groups around the United States and now they're starting to launch around the world, bringing together journalists, computer programmers, text experts, uh, and the like to come together and e explore technology, but also even create technology, things like data scraping technologies, uh, mobile applications, web applications, things like that. So we've been launching these groups in the Middle East to uh, help them develop a lot of local technology. Uh, this is particularly important. You know, we have, if you think about the Arab Spring and the role that things like Twitter and, and uh, Facebook played, and that's been really important, of course, but there aren't a lot of technologies developed locally, uh, and so uh, particularly in Arabic, with local context in mind. And we think again to like this technology in India that we have, Think, of, think about that in these contexts, how that can be important, especially when you still have high illiteracy rates. Um, how do you connect these people and get them into the national conversation and the national media? Uh, so these hacks hackers groups are doing just that. Um, and, and bringing together groups of people for collaboration that typically have not in the past, you know, computer science programs, tech companies, journalists, citizens, activists, and, and, and so on. Uh, and finally, we have in uh, Panama, our fellow Jorge Luis Sierra is launching, uh, or has launched something called the Panama Transparente. And it usually uses an Ushahidi map, uh, which I believe John might get into in a little more detail. But Ushahidi, um, probably many people in here are familiar with. Uh, what we've done with it is citizens can report on crime and corruption. Uh, so instances around Panama of where, you know, for instance, like a car robbery has happened or someone has been attacked or and so on, uh, citizens report to this map. And then uh, our fellow has worked with local media and the forum of journalists there to uh, support the map to make sure that they, they actually pay for a moderator to, to moderate this. Uh, and then um, he has trained journalists to take information and reports from this, verify them, and then conduct investigative reporting on it to, to follow up and make sure that these stories are taken further. And again, we've got this connecting citizens and, and, and journalists and collaborating broadly uh, that, that comes back, you know, and it's also using a technology. Um, so it, it, in a nutshell, the key here is collaboration between citizens and audience, uh, journalists, and technology to create information communities.